Welcome everybody. We start in 45 minutes.
Yeah, welcome everybody. Hey Vlad, how you doing? It, uh, fine, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Uh, I'll put the Great. camera on a second. Everything's all set up. Yeah, Very I, good. Guess, I guess you was going to talk about uh, his time in China. That's what I'm curious about. Yeah, yeah, I don't know a lot of it myself. So, uh, yeah, well, looking forward to hear it. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll be back. I'll be back too. Okay. okay.
Hello, Ben. Hello, John. Good morning. Good morning, Victor. Hello, Hi, good Victor. morning. How are you, Hi, Professor Vinshu? Hi, <laughs> nice, thank you. Very nice to see you. Yeah, me too. So you are morning? Uh, yeah, 6 a.m., uh -huh. 6, 6 okay. morning. Okay, it's quite early. Yeah. Not for a neurosurgeon. <laughs> so, Early John, what's your time? What's your time? It's uh, seven o'clock. Seven, okay. Yeah, one hour ahead of Victor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, how is Acapulco, Victor? Very, very nice, beautiful place. Hope yeah, to yeah. see you. Hope to see you next year. We are uh, preparing um, a congress in uh, next May. In May. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, Doug, uh, Ben, um, mm -hmm. uh, who, who is translating at uh, Benko with Seattle? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, because, you know, the time is, uh, oh. is uh, too late. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry to hear. Okay, no problem. So nobody would uh, watch that webinar at that time. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Except me. Mm -hmm. No problem. Okay. Okay. Oh, you are you here? Are you in yet? I'm here. I'm oh, here. Okay. I will no watch Winko. I will watch Winko. Uh huh. Yeah, he's in two Whatever hours. Time. Whatever time, I will always watch Winko. It's uh, it's um, let's see what time in China would that be? Uh, one. It's uh, ten thirty. 10.30, yeah. yes. Yeah, 10.30, right? 10.30? Yeah. In China, they go early to sleep. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you, I'll put a link in the uh, chat box, the information of the of the, of the link uh, Zoom. Because it's a work day, you know, not a work, uh, weekend. Yeah, oh, okay. So yeah. normally they would be, uh, go to work very early next oh, day, so. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Is the Takashi? Uh, okay. Let me get the information for Venko. Put it in the chat box. Oh. I'm not in the room. I'm not in the room. Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening. Hello. Oh, Takashi. Good morning. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm, I'm doing the uh, workshop uh, neurosurgery. And mm -hmm. I introduced um, Yuka Zemner and Binsu and um, John Bennett. So this this uh, meeting in the neurosurgery. So I will... I'm what to write. Right. Uh, I, I'm, I'm doing the, uh, and I introduced um, and Okay, I put in the chat box the information to log in to Zoom for Rinko. Uh, let me get the information here. Oh. Um, I don't have the time. Let me go to the Facebook. We got five minutes. Information to log in. So, oh yeah, okay, okay. So, Siri, I I'll go out mm. now, but uh, I'll return soon. I'll be yeah, soon. We are not connected in the room. We try to manage technical difficulties. Hey. Okay, I, I put the information uh, of the webinar of Vinko in the chat box. He's doing two things at the same time. Yeah, okay, so. Yeah. My camera is not on, John. No, it's not. 
maybe go to the bottom of the screen and, and there's a camera icon. Maybe you need to turn that on and off. Do you see mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? Everyone is doing. Yeah, at the, the bottom of the corner of the Zoom platform, there's a picture of a camera. It says stop video and, and mute. What do you mean? Okay. Well, rebooting always helps. Well, here's Joanna. Oh, it's okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Uh, very good. So how have you been, you all? I'm fine. I'm fine. I have been hard working on this lecture. I hope we don't have any technical difficulties. Oh, okay. Good morning, Joanna. Okay, she's not there. Should we go? I begin introduce myself. John, did you I'm hear? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What I will say? introduce myself. Okay. So I not. I tell about my background and then we go. China is a big country, so you have to, a lot to think, a lot of things to show. Okay, I'll just introduce myself and just turn it over to you. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just. Yeah, Okay, here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good morning, this is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami Beach for Neurosurgical TV. Uh, we are graced with the presence of Yuha Hernes Nami, who's going to talk about his three plus years in China. Uh, welcome, Yuha. Thank you, John. Welcome, everybody. So I share my screen. Is that okay? Yes, perfect. Okay, so I will tell, tell about my more than three years working in China, in Zhengzhou, in central China, in Henan province. So I'm working in the International Center for Neurosurgery, Henan Provincial People's Hospital, Zhengzhou, China, since June three years or more than three years. So here is short life story. I was born in Kannus, Niemone, Niemone in a small village with less than 100 people and now ending up in the largest country of the world, China with 1,410 million people in the last counting. Why I became a neurosurgeon? They don't see. 
Yeah, but I'll, can you take? So I was studying medical science in Zurich, 1966, 1973, and I saw Professor Kreienbühl and Professor Yasserkil there, and they became my heroes. That's why I became a neurosurgeon, because of them. And then I came, went to train, to be trained in Helsinki, 73, when I became medical doctor, and then I became neurosurgical specialist in 1979, and made also in the same year I made my PhD on uh, brain traumas. After that, I went around the world to learn more. The short periods, I was sitting close to three years in the cold corners of the operations rooms around the world. And then I went to Zurich several times to see Professor Yasakil operate, first time 1982, and this changed my life because I saw him operate on, and I began to follow exactly his footsteps. Before I went to Helsinki from Kuopio, I went to London, Ontario, to Miami to see professors Charlie Drake and Skip Pierres, famous for the posterior circulation anorism surgery. Besides heroes, you need mentors. And this was my mentor when I was resident in a researcher in Helsinki, Seppo Pakarinen. And here he is with his son, Sami Pakarinen, who is now a cardiologist. He was a good man. So this is Finland. The most left arrow is so in the small canus, small village where I was born, and then two arrows where I have been made my lifetime work, Kuopio, Eastern Finland, and then Helsinki, 18 years as chairman, Kuopio, 17 years as a researcher. Finland is a special country. Females are extremely strong. You see, this is our prime minister at the moment, two years now, Sanna Marin. And what we have done specially, we were plugged with, with aneurysms and we formed very good databases. First in Kuopio, I made a good database and then when I moved to Helsinki, Hanna Lehto and Retsai Benham continued the work at the moment, last moment, I know there were 18,000 patients with 22,000 aneurysms. And as this is very special database because it has extremely high number of cases, but because Finland is a very small country, 5.5 million people, but very good organization. So we can follow up all the patients until their death. So we know the cause of the uh, all, all causes of the death of these patients. So this is a very special database and there are many hundreds of publications and many PhDs done based on this database. So I have been learning with masters. Of course, here you see master of masters, Professor Yasakil, and this picture on the right is from the Helsinki Life course, you see. Mika Niemela, my successor, late oh, Evandro Oliveira was there, still in good condition, me, and then Professor Asagil's best two peoples, Ali Christ and Robert Pure, and Reza Dasti, my fellow from Istanbul at that time. So this was Helsinki Life Courses. I was 16 times in them, and then it, it was continued by Professor Niemela, but unfortunately now, certainly because of the COVID time, the life course is went down. After retiring in Helsinki, 2015, you have to retire at the 68 from the professor and chairmanship. 
So I went to spend some time in Little Rock, where I was also uh, one of the members of the soccer team. But I, I was like a tree. They were running around me. I cannot play soccer, but I was involved. But the Latino, Latino fellows were extremely good. But usually Ali Chris uh, team was always winning. And this is uh, Little Rock also. So you saw a beautiful surgery there. Ali Chris doing many cases a day, and beautiful skull based surgery, honor surgery, and vascular surgery. And this is a beautiful uh, dissection, dissection laboratory. Many courses are given there and excellent supervisor is Professor Emad Abut. And this is now, this is what comes now. Then I met Professor Yasakil after being in Zurich several times. Then I met him in, in a meeting in Germany and I invited to Helsinki for after Scandinavian Neurosurgical Congress. And this is uh, 2001. Professor Yasakil, my chairman, Professor Marco Caste, neurologist, and uh, Dr. Sukro Sakral. Uh, was with Professor Yazakil. I know that my hair was darker than now. This is, was the first operation in Helsinki. I've, when we came to Helsinki from Turku, so I saw first day, I saw two aneurysms. First, I made carotid bifurcation aneurysm and then basilar artery aneurysm. This is the basilar artery aneurysm in Park Benz position, and you see Professor Yasakil is, is following the operation. It went extremely well, both the operations, and he was enthusiastic because our organization was around the same than in Zurich, so he continued to operate on two weeks and came then in three, three years to us, and this became, was the beginning of the life course. So this, this is also from the life course. This is third life course and left down you see my first contact uh, with China this is was my first fellow in Helsinki nowadays professor Hu Shen from now in Shenzhen and he was great artist and here he gave a good wonderful picture what he was drawing where Professor Yasaki was operate, operating on Helsinki. And you see on the right down, you see how Pro Professor Yasaki is given everything to for the operation of the patient, making acrobaty, with dancing with the microscope to have a good angle. And here he is explaining the participants, everything, and Hussein is assisting closing the wound up, upwards. So before I became chairman in Helsinki, I went to see Professor Drake and Professor Pieles to London, Ontario. And I was very enthusiastic about their work. I went, wanted to make a fellowship there, and I went there. But at the same time, Professor Drake retired and Professor Spielers moved to Miami. So I followed him to Miami. This is from Miami uh, 30 years ago. Jackson Memorial Hospital. I was working on the uh, posterior circulation analysis material of, of uh, Professor Drake and Spielers, 1767 patients with the counting and then we made a book and uh, it is it has the second edition of course nowadays very few people are operating on posterior circulation aneurysm and this remains certainly the largest series but the book was by Drake, PLS and Hernes M. It was 
it was a wonderful book when it came out and I still am proud of it because I I wrote nearly every page myself and it was checked by uh, Dr. Drake and we were sitting together and arguing about the fate of the patients. Dr. Drake was saying this Texas girl didn't have oclusal palsy and then I then I tapped my computer and showed, showed that she had, but it recovered well. So Dr. Drake called me computer man, even I was just a rookie in using the computer. And of course, now, now the young generation is by far better and I, I couldn't learn. I was also trying to read, teach Professor Asakil computer use in Canary Islands. One week we had one hour computer training, but uh, at the third or fourth time he escaped and he didn't want to do anymore. So it shows that there are different skills. This is Wink Dolenz, one of the greatest neurosurgeons in Helsinki life course, and behind him, Professor Tanikawa Sapporo is following. And this is here in China. Pink Codolens came to our life courses. And here it is a happy this to sit around a rotating table. And this is one of them occasions. Here, one more. And this is my good friend. Professor Smidek from Mannheim, Germany. He came three times here to China when I was here. And unfortunately, after the last visit last summer, he died. He sometimes ate very special Chinese food. This is scorpions. It was extremely tasty and good. Even I don't like so much the Chinese food. And this is, these are also good friends and support. We have went around the world. This is Professor Aki Kawashima from Tokyo, Stanford Su from Taiwan, and the lady is Fitri Suwardi from uh, Indonesia. So I'm now, now I speak about my presence and future. Professor Subin, who is here in the audience, is one of the, my most important persons in my life. He came several times to Helsinki. We were discussing, and he invited me to Huasan Hospital. And we went also to his hometown, small, ta small town or village, like they say here in China. I think it had three or four million people, so they called it a small city. And here is my uh, First fellow, Professor, Professor, Professor Tu Shen in Shenzhen, he is going now to retire as a chairman of this hospital. This is recent photo. We came several times with the Eskulab Academy and were flying from city to city and made life course in one city. This is from Harbin on the Russian border famous for tigers. And this is Sangdu, Panda City. And the right picture shows how the relatives are in the hospital. They have to be there all the time, taking care of the patients. Before I, we came to China, we went to Nepal. This, <coughs> this is the innovative young neurosurgeon, Jack Serian, and his wife, Salona. They are now working in India. This is Jack's birthday. This was the team in Nobel Institute in Biratnagar, Nepal. So this was the change in my life. I went to Neurosurgical Congress of China in August 2017. And there were, there were Professor Tiang Xiao Li from Henan Provincial People's Hospital. And then 
There was also Professor Su Bing, Shanghai Western Hospital, and they were discussing with me and invited me to work here. I told that I have promised to go to Nepal for one year, but I promised to come back after one year. So I think this picture is from the, this, this occasion when Professor Tiang Xia Li and his uh, senior doctors were inviting me to join Henan Provincial People's Hospital and I promised to come. And then I came here 2017, invited and then 2017, there was a very festive uh, signing of the agreement. In China, they make it extremely festive. There is loud music and uh, a lot of photos and videos are taken. This is President Gu, extremely effective uh, president of this huge hospital. And this is Xu Bin, as I mentioned, one of the most important persons in my life. He, He's certainly world champion in bypasses. I don't know the exact number, but it must be now 8,000 or 9,000. We can ask after this lecture how many he has done. The record is 12 cases in one day. Ask. We have been told that you cannot hear. Can you hear me? Yes, yes can. we can hear you. Yes, we can yes. hear you well. Uh, my secretary was saying that the volume is too low. For Chinese, it's too low. Electricity is down. Oh, I can, we, I can we, speak louder. Oh. But the, Okay, we can hear you. We can't hear the video. You want us to hear the video? Uh, Yuha, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Your voice is okay. No, no problem. Okay. Okay. So this is my new home where I'm living now since more than three years. This is Henan Provincial People's Hospital in central China, one of the oldest regions of China. This is an unprovincial people's hospital. It's the second largest hospital in the world. The largest one is also in Chengzhou, Uni University Hospital, our rival. It has more than 10,000 beds. And then there are several more neurosurgical clinics because Henan province has the biggest population of, of all the provinces in China. This is the uh, hospital complex of and an provincial people's hospital, more than 6,500 6, beds. But what is important here, there are more cases all the time. So in this big hospital, there are 650 beds for neurosurgery, neurology, and cerebrovascular diseases. And there are 15 different subunits with senior leaders. So as I mentioned, the population is 110 million, and Shengzhou has 11 million people. So, why I said there are more patients because there are uh, departments are crowded with patients. There is a lot, big flow, like Yellow River, of the patients all the time. So, this is from Sayo uh, Lee's de department. So, many patients are lying, lying outside of the rooms. And I should. Now you see here something very special. <laughs> And here, this is from the Shaolin Congress.
这里藏着人体最深处的秘密，这是人类试图用人脑移植人脑的极限挑战。洞悉病灶，精准定位，大脑在全新的秩序里焕发新生。药瓶、磨钻、斜刀、刀丝。指甲，它们也许乏味、枯燥，而又缺少美感。然而，一旦被双手触摸，它们便不再冰冷。而当激情与智慧注入其中，它们也便有了灵魂。在同一条追梦的路上，我们互为榜样，相互滋养。倾听彼此心中坚定而清晰的声音，脚踏实地，携手扛起责任与担当。心有所想，心有所向。科技创新，非一日之功，亦非一己之力。我们在时间的步履中。整装待发，只为守卫生命的希望。我们在平凡的相遇里，热情洋溢，只为忽悠托付的健康。再一次，为成长积蓄力量；再一次，只为追逐的梦想；再一次，为了更多人能分享阳光；再一次。相约在通往学习的路上，经常相伴，共促交流，志向科技力量，精研医学，人数匠心，书写温暖篇章，因使命而施救，为使命而出发，这不是一时的身份，而是一生的。庄严承诺。So this was the second Shaolin Congress. By the name is Shaolin, here close to Zhengzhou, is Shaolin Temple, and there is a big kung fu school. More than one thousand young boys and girls are trained going to school and learn kung fu. And this is from my operation room. We were provided with very good equipment. It is very similar setting than in Helsinki, like you, those who have been in Helsinki can see. Good videos, a lot of videos, mobile microscope with mouse feeds, navigator, everything is perfect here. Mouse feeds also. And my After operation, explaining what I have done, sometimes very difficult because the communication is difficult because we don't have the same language. English is poor here. And then came the COVID time. Then a lot of masks were provided here around the world. We made small visits. Here I'm visiting Tai Chi Master in Henan. And Then healthcare is extremely good here for those who work here. I have never been checked so uh, throughout. So I had also endoscopic gastrointestinal check and uh, every year CT, MRI. So this is uh, extremely, extremely well organized. This is Yellow River, the huge river, very important river. And then, in the beginning, before the COVID time, we had visitors from from more than 20 countries. This is a similar map, like we had in Helsinki, where more than 3,000 people came. But of course, then with COVID 
the time is stopped. No one is coming here because there's extremely strong quarantine. If you come inside the country, you have to be three to six weeks in quarantine. And this prevents every traveling now. So my last traveling outside of China was in Prague three years ago. And in Finland, I have been four years ago. And this is our operation room. This is a, a ping, it's the scrap nurse, extremely good scrap nurse. She speaks English, but we don't have to, <clears throat> we don't have to speak because she knows what is coming. She looks at the screen and the other scrap nurse, Shen Shen, the same level. And you see, I'm a good student of Professor Yasaki. Here I'm making the gymnastic acrobaty with the mobile microscope. Patient was in sitting position, occipital AVM, and I had to uh, operate in acrobat angles, but we did well with the patient. And this is the team you see here. I am not the most important person in this team besides me. is city professor Yang Xiao Li. He's the leader of the whole uh, Serpuaskar neurosurgical unit, huge unit. And then there's a professor Xu, professor Bai, neuroanesthetist Fitri Sumardi, Duan. And you see the names here, and then big number of of uh, presidents and fellows. And there is also a Finnish lady, she's Essi, who studied in Shanghai, <clears throat> all his medical studies. And of course, um, all the guys were very enthusiastic about this blonde beauty. This is teaching in China. Many times you have to draw because we cannot communicate very well. And that's Usually this in the meetings, there's big fighting, how to treat the patients, but this is good and we come usually to good solutions. And what is important here, the patients decide a lot what, what will be done here. This is special in China. And then there are different ceremonies, birthday ceremony of le with leaders and this is very important photo because this is this man here in the middle is Sayo Lee. He's joining us. So we're joining our teams now and we make a, a microsurgical team, strong team. I am saying that so uh, this is very important because Sayo Lee is one of the extremely skillful neurosurgeon, has done close to 4,000 bypasses and aneurysms, also a big number. His fault is that he's not speaking English and we have, must push him to speak English. He would be a world star here, but he's, it is good to work with him. He's a good neurosurgeon, excellent, and this is his team, excellent team also. The, Families are bringing food to, to the base. So the families are always coming to the hospital and they go to buy food and bring the food to the, the patients. And uh, this is very special, for example, in Helsinki. Of course, of course, the patients are provided by the hospital kitchen, the food. But this is, this is different organization. Of course, if you have uh, seven more than 7,000 patients in the hospitals, it's certainly difficult to organize a big kitchen for all of them and the families. This is patient room. Wife is taking care of the husband, speaking before the operation. Now, there's a big central operation room with 80 operation rooms, and nine operation rooms for the surgery, two hybrid rooms, and there are three endovascular rooms for cerebrovascular diseases. All rooms are running late in the evening, but as compared to Helsinki, tiny hospital, the same thing times are long because this is a huge hospital. It takes time to transport the patients. 
at 30 beds for neurointensive care, and then there is also a pediatric neurointensive care. And huge number of recovery rooms, of course, a lot of operations are done in AT operation room beginning in the morning, all kind of operation, general surgery, orthopedic surgery, pediatric surgery. So this needs a lot of personnel and a big number of recovery rooms. I'm always wondering how they don't mix the patients because the patient names are very similar, but I never noticed that something happened because they are checking, checking, checking everything. So, as mentioned, there's extremely strong endoscopy team, and this, this is founded by Professor Tianxi Li, and he made his own school. He is one of the best endoscopy surgeons in China and has extremely strong pupils. So, there's a big number of cerebral aneurysms a year, 1,300. So, 70% are done by endoscopy means, and then the rest. 400 microsurgical aneurysm operations, more than 100 AVMs, and I, as I mentioned, bypasses are common here because Moya Moya disease is extremely common. So, around 600 bypasses are done by Professor Sayulis and Living South team, and they record is up to, until now they have made seven bypasses in one day, and there are a lot of brain tumors. A lot of charetta, microvascular decompression a year, and endoscopic surgery is the main way to do hypocellular tumors, hypocellular tumors. So it's different from Helsinki, for example, that all the spine is done by orthopedic surgeons. So this is no, research are not touching, except there is a tumor inside the dura or vascular malformation. And very weird cases are coming. This was an 18 years old boy, had third bleeding from the huge AVM. I wanted to be active like I have been always in Helsinki, but the, the family, is there something wrong? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I wanted to be active like I have been trying always trying to save the patients, but uh, maybe it was wise to give up with this huge AVM and the family took the patient home and he died some days later. This is another big AVM in posterior fossa, the skillful embolite, Professor Su and Professor Bai, partially and then it was resected totally with good result. Men, because of the special skills of Professor Bai, Professor Xu, many central AVMs are coming for treatment in our hospital. Here's one of them. They skillfully embolize them in one or two settings and mainly successfully. So this is, of course, by far better than surgery in these cases. But this is my work profile. Outpatient clinics. Outpatient clinic I have to do with my secretary, Dr. Tung San Chen, because I'm not able to speak to patients, so he communicates and translates and helps me in every, everything. So, this operation room and discussion with the directors of the hospital, there are case discussions, also teleconsultations, ward rounds, and then this is Thanksgiving of the patients. They give that kind of special flags with text I cannot read, but they so they thank that they are thankful for treatment. And then every year, some doctors get the annual award as best doctors. I got one year I got this award. So what I'm doing here in the operation room. I was doing a lot of operations in Helsinki, but now I, I have reduced a lot my operative the operations. I'm doing two to four personal operations a week. These are mainly cerebral aneurysms, AVMs, and deep 
brainstem carbonomas and I have not, until now not very seldom done brain tumors, but I think when we join now with Professor Sayo Lee and Himing Chao's team, so we will get a big flow of the patients for microsurgery. So this patient here in China, this would kill Professor Yasaki. A lot of noise in operation rooms, sudden shouting with loud, loud voice, sudden noises, speaking cellulars. It cannot be changed, I was thinking. But now in our own operation room, it is quiet because we asked to be quiet. And we, have, we have warned not to make any sounds. So some learning has happened. This quiet surrounding makes surgeries more enjoyable. I was wondering why they are talking so loud in China. And this is one of the good explanations and good explanations so I heard that the people were working at the paddy fields where they were shouting loud to each other and needed loud, loud shouting so that they could hear and it still continues when they talk in the cellulars and especially when the old people speak in cellular, but also the young ones. So they are shouting in the cellular. This is very special, special and uh, always surprised about that. But this is what we do oper operator aneurysm, right, left, lateral supraural approach, partial and taking hair. Of course, we use skull clamp, but this patient was saved before putting in the Sukita frame. We have extremely similar setting here, like in Helsinki. So it is a, like a copy of that. And this is from operation room. Here again, skillful partners ping without speaking, looking at the skin. She gives the instruments and we are working very fast and efficient together. This is Hugo and Rade Balasarte, my right hand. We have been 11 years, so usually Hugo is opening, the positioning and opening the patient. And then I continue when we are at the call. There Hugo again with his team, beginning the operation. On the left is my secretary, Dr. PhD, Tung San Chen standing, and a lot of photos is taken. This is the habit usual in China. This is the anesthesi anesthesia team, Dr. Fitri Sumardi from Bandung, Indonesia, and Chinese colleague taking good care of the anesthesia. And they have a big screen where you can, follow. there are many big screens you can follow the operation. Here, AVM operation, process U following my operation. Process U is a very experienced hybrid neurosurgeon doing uh, high number of AVMs and I'm not thousands of them. Here, Hugo Palazarte, my right hand, originally from Venezuela, was trained in Helsinki. We have been together 11 years, and he went to Toronto, and then has been in Germany, and now three years here in China with me. And will go, was elected to be a staff member in Toronto. So he is positioning the patient for sitting position, and we are operating this patient in sitting position. We didn't do so many of them here in sitting position, but uh, it's this picture shows we can do it very well. This is also from operation room. I think this is the same picture I have shown, sorry. And I have counted something. This is China population. It is 1,410 million in the last counting. 
So it means around 40 to 80, 80 million Chinese are carrying unruptured cerebral aneurysms. To treat them all, it is extremely big thing. So pipelines are expensive and vascular surgery is expensive. Clipping is by far less expensive. This is what I saw. Usually speaking in favor of microsurgery. But because the price of the endovascular surgery is so high, so it means that four and six, pa six sick patients have open surgery. And these are my patients because uh, some people have no insurance or they are poor, they cannot provide those endovascular stuff. And what is special here in Henan, the even young people have terrible atherosclerosis, also young patients. Why? They are eating a lot of fatty food. We call it Mao pork because it was a favorite food of Mao Zedong. And smoking is heavy. So more than two thirds of the male patients are smoking. I've seen only 10, 10 females smoking here in China. Uh, I, I don't think they are uh, smoking at home. So this is the male, male thing. Then uh, pollution is heavy here. It might influence something with the diseases and genetic. So the Moya Moya disease is so extremely common here. And we are studying that what could cause this terrible disease. So smoking is forbidden. I like very much this sign here. Smoking is forbidden, but it doesn't help. Every, everywhere is smoking in the steps, even in the toilets of the, the department. Males go smoking. And then before COVID time, it was possible to go to conferences. I've seen why I did. This is Guangxi province. And this then there's a yearly honors clip competition in Shanghai. Asan organizing the S Club Academy, organizing so I have been several times referee. One time as, a, as I was referee before coming to China, uh, permanently uh, Subin was winning this competition. Admission policy is totally different from the Scandinavian countries. So this wild and confusing. So how the, where the patients go. When regular patients also try to select the place of their treatment, that's big advertisement in WeChat and Weibo by the medical doctors and patients go shopping, like we say, shopping and ask many opinions, opinions and then select some of them. Many patients consult the big classic units in Beijing, Tiantan and Shanghai, Huasan, hospital and many go there for treatment so they have a huge patient flow and i have heard that rich patients may go abroad but i have seen only one patient operated on in, in germany what is special here in Shenzhou and all over china follow-up of the patients is extremely difficult it's not well organized. Actually, I consist follow up is non existing. After operation, only few patients come to outpatient clinic controls. They go to the local hospitals, and it is difficult to know their fate. So, we have been thinking that we could do it with cellulars because every China, Chinese has now cellulars, and using the use of the VSAT, Weibo is extremely common. So. You could reach the patient and ask their fate that way. And we are planning to hire nurses to do that, but it's very difficult to organize. So communication is difficult all over the China, except some international cities like Shanghai, Beijing, Shenzhen, Guangzhou. Few people and very few nurses speak English. I estimate in my hospital, less than 5% speak uh, English. 
So I decided I will learn Chinese. And we had a private teacher five times, two hours a day. I learned maybe six to 700 words and phrases, and I think I can manage. But the Chinese language is so di different. Like here is aneurysm, dogma liu. There's nothing similar with the other languages, what, we, uh, what I'm speaking. I'm speaking five languages. So I thought I can manage, but I couldn't manage. So after one year, I had to stop because when I was speaking something, nobody understood because the pronunciation is so difficult. So in China, I am like a child. I cannot speak, I cannot read, I cannot write. What I'm doing, I live in my brain and the experience. And this is, this my experience is totally different from my surroundings. Here, I see extremely high number of very skilled neurosurgeons and the flow of the number of cases is like Yellow River. But what is disturbing me, there's low number of sharing experience in international journals until now, because this high, high level experience should be published and, uh, and uh, a good records, but this is not happening. This is because of lack of uh, English scientific writing. So it means that the, these skillful researchers, they remain local heroes. They publish their cases every day in WeChat, Weibo, like this, like WhatsApp. There's uh, pictures and videos of the operation and there's heavy competition of the patients. So this is like advertisement with the WeChat. So I was wondering, can I change something in Henan, China or in the world? Maybe in many years, but many years are needed. Here's the classic sentence of Kale and Mahatma Gandhi. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they hate you, and then you win. So we selected some goals in surgery, no hair shaving to speed that around to China, and then better anesthesia to have a slack brain, head high above cardiac level, sometimes using semi-sitting or sitting position, and then teaching different approaches, which I have been used, been using in Helsinki. The Helsinki book has been translated in Chinese, and uh, I was wondering if it's so small book, but the Chinese writing is so tight, so it is by far smaller than the actual English version of the Helsinki Microneurosurgery book. What I'm operating, brainstem carinomas, aneurysms, AVMs. These are <coughs> Chinese ladies. You see the beautiful hair. They have beautiful black hair. And what happens in our hospital? This is the practice now, all over the China. It's, it, this is terrible for me. This uh, 1982, last time took the fe, uh, female hair away. So this is my practice. This is 10 years old girl, but it are medium sized AVM, large hematoma. You see, she looks perfect when recovering, and she went happy home and then immediately to school. When you take the hair from the females, they are invalidized a long time. The same here, young, beautiful lady after AVM operation, two months after AVM operation. The left picture is from my, my, my office. You have to carry masks all the time, and this is. Everybody, everyone is carrying mask here. This is very important. Also, young patient with AVM looks beautiful. Has gone home with good hair. It is invalidating to take the female hair out. Patients 
may show their thank thanks by giving positive comments. I cannot read what is written there here. What can I say? It is written there. Something. Thank you for your skills. Or yeah, this is uh, this very special occasion with the patient and family folks home. So the family is out of time with the patient here taking care of the patient and they usually then go home carrying big number of big things they had in the room during the stay here. So what we have tried, we have tried to push the neurosurgeons publishing because there is a huge number of rare cases, beautiful cases we would have published in the same week in Helsinki. This minor success. Changing attitude more international, this minor success. Of course, the COVID has influenced that very much. And then we have tried to connect people with international change of experience, minor success. You can accuse COVID time for that, but it is not only that. So it is, it was also before that COVID time we had, we were not so successful. Then with President Gu, the successor, President Chen and Professor Liang Xiao Li, they hired a group of good scientific writers and researchers to help in publishing huge material of Henan. Professor Liang Xiao Li gave an order that every senior domestic researcher has to write one paper a year. It didn't happen. It is difficult to push the researchers to write. What the researchers do, they love to do surgery and that's all. They love to do several surgeries and not, not to write, write scientific papers. Maximally, they publish their good cases in WeChat. This is more advertisement than, than scientific writing. Then we made a plan to make research at Henan Provincial People's Hospital. We had a plan to study spinal in injuries because a very big number of uh, cervical injuries, 300 a year. It didn't, it was not successful. Maybe one of the reasons was the big competition between the different hospitals, not good cooperation. With Moya Moya disease, we have been more successful. Uganda, Parasarte, with Professor Sayoli and Lim Chao are doing great work to taking biopsies of the <coughs> arteries by the biopsies and studying them carefully with histopathologically. I was pushing the people to, <coughs> to do a pipe, a database on cerebral annulus because there's a huge number of annulus that are coming here, also in the university hospital also. But uh, it was not possible, it was not possible. Of course, I cannot read Chinese, so we need people who can speak English and English and Chinese, and most of the young doctors are not motivated or they don't understand in the same way the importance of the scientific writing and publishing. They wanted to have international fellows here involved in writing and publishing, but the COVID time killed this idea, so we didn't have any, but some came before that time. So what is I'm always saying, English is important. English is the language of scientific world. This one, no, no one can change, should be able to speak and write. And what I say to the excellent colleague, like I mentioned, Professor Chai Lee, excellent neurosurgeon, good skills, he should learn English and he would be a world star also like Subin. So with the English learning, even there's a English schools, there are very modest steps, actually the nurses who go to uh, these courses and there's competition in English. English, so they are speaking better than the doctors. 
and doctors what i see they have even deteriorated in their english because it is not actively used so like in helsinki we wanted to do organized life courses and this has been successful uh, have been legends <coughs> and stars of international neurosurgery professor Vico Dolenz has been here, Professor Christ has been here, Kawashima has been here, Stanford Su from Taiwan. And then I was wondering how to teach Chinese researchers. And then we were speaking with Professor Xu Bin, we were giving webinars, and then then we came to the idea. I, I'm giving the lectures, and Xubin is translating in Chinese, and this was extremely successful. We uh, invited the first stars to the, our webinars. Xubin speaking good English and translating simultaneously, and now in the late latest famous webinars, uh, Takeshi Kon from Tokyo is translating. So. Whilst there was uh, 5,000 audience, and this was by Professor Yasaki two times, he was giving a lecture. And, and, uh, we have a total of 100,000 audience in one more than one year. We, we, we began last September 2020, these, these webinars, and they have been extremely successful. For always Friday, 8 o'clock in the evening. And some people like the videos then during the weekend. So we have had six live courses. The first was international because it was not COVID time. Last live course was held in November in association with the Shaolin Congress. There were 1,000 participants and with webinars, 30,000 audience. Shaolin Congress. The name is coming, like I told you, from the Shaolin Temple, Shaolin School, Kung Fu School, where we have been visiting this very interesting place to go because you see young people, they go to school and train in Kung Fu years after years and, and certainly become great masters this, by this heavy training. So we have been trying to improve follow up of the patients publishing instead of WeChat, Weibo in international journals it has not been very successful and we have been <coughs> we have published some cases the best person have been here Hugo Andrade Palazarte who has corrected the writing of the initial Chinese Chinese English writing and uh, he has been huge number he has been working a lot with this this uh, rewriting and correcting and this is uh, a very heavy work to do then i was so enthusiastic when i come here we wanted to make an aneurysm randomized study because there's a huge number of aneurysms so i was speaking with professor tiang Li that so we could make a randomized study randomize the basis for clipping and and there was our procedures but when I came here, I noticed immediately it is not possible. Like we made it Kuopio, the first randomized study, Kuopio, small city, Eastern Finland. So every patient can be traced and followed up all the time. But here, here it is not possible. It is not possible. And then uh, the cooperation between the different departments is, is not so. I think it was very difficult to make any randomized study in this hospital because there's a lot of competition how to treat the patient and this is this is not possible in the way like we did in Kuopio. This is the first Shaolin International Neurosurgical Congress uh, 2018. This was the idea of Professor Tiang Xiao Li to make this big congress. I was present in the first, there were 3,000 participants giving here, giving here my philosophy of 
on your search tree, you should, you should travel going around and, like I say, stealing steal the experience. <coughs> this is the second Shaolin Congress. Wing Kodolens was getting the Shaolin Prize. Besides him is Victor Hugo Hugo Perez and then President. Something wrong? President of the World Federation, William Colwell from Utah, and uh, me and uh, Neuroanesthetist Fitri Sumarti. This is the second one. The first Shaolin Prize became become Professor Yasakil, and last year it was Professor Konovalov from Kurdenko, Moscow, and then Professor Kudo Kuglielmi. Unfortunately, they couldn't come here because restrictions, but they gave ex excellent lectures. And, and uh, now this year, he invited Professor Spetzle, but this Shaolin Congress was postponed because they increased numbers of COVID cases. Increase of COVID case numbers, I am always wondering what does it mean here? Because that in China, you have 100, 200 COVID cases a day, and this 1,410 1, million people. And when you look at the other countries, or the, even Finland, small country, as when they had 2,000 cases, and now it is below 1,000. So it is difficult to understand, but the policy is extremely strict here. So this is one of the life causes, Vincodole, to be in Master of Ibasis, Victor Hugo Beres, doing a beautiful specimen and uh, have helped in the Paraver laboratory. First course, then second course, big number of participants. These are all domestic now because no one can come from a probe inside. So, two years. We couldn't see any of these beautiful places. We wanted to go to Tibet. We wanted to go to Mongolia. In Yang, it was not possible to travel. It was forbidden to travel even nearby cities. And it's even very much restricted. So it has been difficult times that way. So when continuing here, I asked in the work agreement, should get a, a domestic holiday where we want to go. I would like to see also the, the western part of China. In Xi'an, I have been several times before coming permanently to China. I'm always thinking when I see this Xi'an terracotta soldiers, which is something very special. I always think about my my operation, operation. So I think I have operated more than 16,000 patients. So I always think that this one had hemiplegia, this one died, this had oclomotor palsy. So this is the row of the complications you have in your long term 50 years of neurosurgical life. So this is a picture I, I like in this, this way. And this, of course, it is. Uh, extremely great uh, touristic attraction, and they are all the time fi finding more of these terracotta sources there. And so it is increasing all the time. You may buy that kind of terracotta sources, copy. I had in Helsinki home, I have that kind of clean, clean terracotta sources. This was mid city. So this is the huge psychiatric hospital. Xi'an? 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 Yeah, huge psychiatric hospital. I want to see a psychiatric hospital. Xingxiao. Uh, you, you see, I, I cannot hear, pronounce the names. So, but the, the hospital is huge. Thousands, thousands of patients. And we went inside. There was a uh, department for psychotic patients. Here they are eating inside the hospital. And in this big psychiatric hospital, they were just 
how they were building a neurosurgical operation room. Beautiful. What happened? So they were building, a, just have built a very nice neurosurgical department, small neurosurgical department with three operation rooms and very nice equipment, like you see. And this is COVID time, extremely heavy time in the beginning. And the nurses were working extremely hard and the, also our hospital sent workers to Wuhan, where the main part, point of the COVID situation was. I was six weeks in, in quarantine. See what quarantine means here in China. This door is sealed, it is open only once. You get the food inside. And what could I do in the six week? I began to write my memories. I was very successful and effective in that because I had nothing else to do. So, so I, it was the beginning and my memories will come uh, next, next autumn in less than one year out. They are ready now and they, I will, when I go to Finland, they will be checked and then hopefully translated also in large, large languages, 500 pages of memories of the becoming a neurosurgeon and life in neurosurgery. And this is our hospital. Many guards checking everyone with cellulars and also the temperature is checked and you cannot run inside the hospital without without careful checking there are everywhere at every door there are guards taking care that no one is coming without a checkup inside so this may be the, the secret of the low number of covid cases because here you cannot have any distance. There's no safety distance. This is how it is. This is our, our international center, the seventh house number seven. You see a huge number of patients queuing inside, family members and patients. And in the lift, safety distance for this, that but everybody is wearing a mask. It is very important. Everybody is wearing a mask. Then we have went to some nearby cities to see some uh, attractions, temples. Praying. But this one I couldn't see because this, I think this is from Tibet. So it takes time to go there because of the situation. And this is, we have, not, we have some good friends and this is one of our best friends, Sasha Boy. So I have been successful in that way that this is the world neurosurgery cover some years ago, uh, 69 most important neurosurgeons in the world. See also two Chinese, of course, you see Kusing, Dandy, Sami, Yasarkil, and so on, being condolence. But I was elected here in the north. I'm here in the north. Where's the arrow? Take back. No, I'm here. Yeah, side proof. This is the most northern European country, Finland. So I was extremely taken of this big honor to be in this group with the famous teachers and one of the role of the developing researchery. So I thank you all for teaching critics, support, and friendship. This is how it 
we develop, we are standing on the shoulders of the giants, of the former generations, and that because of that we can reach higher. This way, these are one of my heroes and teachers, Professor Yazakil, of course, teacher of the teacher, master of masters, Spetzle, Lawton, Sano, Anikawa, and unfortunately, Emanuel Oliveira. Uh, I died last year in terrible disease. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. So, this is important message. Never forget those who helped and guided you. So, I thank you very much. This is a one young avian patient, beautiful young lady after surgery in the dancing group. Thank you very much. Cheshini. Okay, okay, thank you very much. You uh, uh, look into your life and experience, and you have a lot of people, I think, that want to say some things. Uh, would anyone on the panel like to, like to comment? Ben, do you want to start it off? Yeah, thank you, Professor Yuha. You uh, achieved a lot. You Actually, you are very modest for for your achievement in China, in China. Actually, we have so successful webinars. Uh, and um, uh, just as you mentioned, it's a may maybe the biggest webinar series in the world. Uh, the participants, uh, accumulated participants is around uh, 140,000. <laughs> That's a great number. Thank you again. Yeah, so I have just one moment to mention that to be this, I don't know what is your actual number of uh, bypasses now and what's the day, one day record of bypasses. I have been in Huasan Hospital recently. I saw how extremely effective the team is working here. So in the different operation room, making step-by-step -step bypasses. So what is the number now? Uh, now it's Should around be... the 9,000. 9, oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I was one thousand behind you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, now uh, every year, uh, more one thousand, at least. Yeah, that's yeah, a big, bigger flow. Also in Henan Province, people, hospital, Sayuli and his team, they, they had they are doing now six hundred bypasses a year. This is of course only half of that. What you are doing. Dr. Gowell, did you want to say a word too? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. You are, you have played an absolutely important role in the world of neurosurgery, in the world of technical neurosurgery, in the world of fine micro neurosurgery. You have not only done, you have promoted it, you have popularized it, and you have shown your outcome in various workshops, conferences all over the world. Your contributions to the world of neurosurgery will remain absolutely critically important and will go on giving message of to every young and old and senior and every kind of neurosurgeon all over the world how to do, what to do, when to do, and how to be, how to have humility in your character, how to be humble despite the success how to have your legs firmly girded despite your head being so high. I think uh, you have, I have personally got great messages from you, messages of love, messages of affection, messages of teaching, and messages to do good neurosurgery. I think I will be in debt to you for your contributions to the world and to me personally. Thank you, Yuha. Thank you for your kind words, Atul. Any more comments? Thank you, Professor Yuha. For me, it has been wonderful to be with you in three different occasions in China. So you are an example for all the brain surgeons around the world, for vascular 
and tumor surgery. Uh, this has been for me an un of unforgettable lecture. Thank you so much. Hope to see you. I hope to see you next year here in Mexico if uh, COVID allows. Yeah, it would be great to come to Acapulco. Uh, um, as you rem remember, we have invited you. We have to plan to make a cadaver lab, so we have invited you and Madap to help in forming a good cadaver lab. This is our plan in the future year with uh, President Chen and Professor Piaxiali. So to make a cadaver lab here. So, so you are certainly more than welcome as a, one of the most skilled, skilled cadaver lab doing beautiful specimen, beautiful, beautiful specimen of people who are doing about the arteries, veins everywhere, also in the spine. So I'm always wondering how you can take the spinal cord out and then show the arteries that is big work, hard work. Thank you. Uh, one thing for uh, for Professor Yuhai, you mentioned that the Chinese version of the of your book is uh, quite thin, but actually I uh, also joined the translation work for your book. Actually, you know when the English translated into Chinese, it can it could be <laughs> thinner, much thinner. Yeah. yeah, so it, 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 I, yeah, I guarantee I we already translated all, all your <laughs> English into I, Chinese. I, yeah, I I have checked, so, uh, uh, <laughs> so every, everything everything is inside, but it's only so much thinner, but so this yeah, very yeah. practical yeah, language, yeah, yeah. Language. yeah, right? So it is very very good. It's very. I, popular, al so I, I also noticed the difference between the uh, the word number. Yeah. Very good. And, and, more better, right? yeah. and your good uh, superior right. orbital uh, literal approach now it's uh, some kind of standard approach for the uh, aneurysm clipping. So <coughs> actually, it's uh, quite popular in China. That's this also thanks for you. Yeah. This is we were, I was discussing with Hugo Andrade about that. that that's because I was opening all the cases myself. So I developed something in the opening. If the residents or fellows are opening, so they are not developing something in the opening of the skull. But I, because I was op opened all the cases in Finland, I opened myself. So I developed very fast technique in that. And so I think this is one of the biggest achievements there. Developer, a lot of approach, so it's very simple. In Helsinki, where I did many cases, so I was below below ten minutes. I was in, inside the door already. Uh, with, with, with Emil, I will make the, certainly the record of uh, another clipping. There was M1, another man ruptured, another right side. So I opened and I clipped the others, and then Professor Mikan Emila closed this 25 minutes. If somebody can do better, then we, no way we can say it like uh, no one can beat Professor Subin in the Pibasis or Professor Drake, PLS, late Professor Drake, PLS in the, in the posterior circulation, and also no one beat this series. So the second, second, Fastest operation was 28 minutes or so with Professor Mikaniemela. He was closing fast. I asked him when it was, went so fast that if he closed in one layer, that he was doing a perfect job. So, but then came the ICG and different interoperative methods, of course, then this takes more. Usually we could do below an hour from skin to skin. Giancarlo Perra has met been many times in Helsinki, good friend, many years. You are muted, Shankaru. Can you, so I'm, you are muted. I'm muted, yeah. Hello? Yes, we can hear, we can hear you more now. Yes, yeah. 
Hello. Hey, Thank you. you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, this is Dr. Ahmed Fawad Mirzad from Afghanistan. Uh, thank you, Professor Yuha and Professor John Bennett for such a good uh, opportunity for sharing your experience. And we um, uh, got a lot from your experience. And just I like to know, is it possible to have some uh, chances for Afghanistan, uh, young neurosurgeon or uh, for uh, further uh, a scale like a fellowship or scholarship in your center or other uh, uh, opportunity in other countries uh, that's for uh, Afghanistan people. Thank you. We had, uh, I had 16 times life course in Helsinki and when I was working in Helsinki there were more than 3,000 visitors around the world. Now in China because of COVID time. So I, I have to say that China is closed. Because when you come here, then you have to be three weeks in quarantine. And Hugo, came, Hugo, my uh, excellent right hand, came back from Germany. He was six weeks in quarantine. quarantine. So it means that it makes actually that kind of training impossible and it's difficult to get the visas and organize. So it, it, it continues. It continues. How also this year's Shaolin Contras. Congress was postponed until next year, and I, I don't know if it, it can be done in the beginning of next year. So the situation seems to continue. Uh, uh, Europe is in flames, USA, Latin America is in flames, even Australia and Singapore have high numbers. So we are following that exactly. And uh, I think the strong discipline in China helps to prevent if there would be not that kind of strong discipline and people obeying common, then there would be millions every day cases now. So, Thank you. Strong control and everybody using masks. Okay, any more comments before we close? Um, yes, John. Like go ahead, go ahead, Harshad, go ahead. Oh, yeah, no problem. Hello, Professor Jua. Hello, Hasad. Hi, how are you? Excellent, excellent journey. I, you are very inspirational. Nobody can be your critics. Can I? And we are too small to criticize or being critical about you. You are inspirational and you have pearls of wisdom to give to all over the world. And amazing life which you are given. You are giving us an inspiration to learn more and more and amazing work you are doing in China, as well as in Helsinki. And I'm the student of neurosurgery who is following you every Friday and enjoy to learn from you. Amazing, you are the institution itself rather than uh, just a lecture. It's too, too small to say anything. The words are too small to say about you. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you so for your time. We are beyond words. Beyond words. Was, beyond words. When I was working in in Eastern Finland as a special dialect, and uh, when when you give that kind of prize to a person, and he's saying keukelisse, this means that tell more, tell more. I can hear because it is so ple great pleasure to hear what you are speaking, so you are giving too much, too much good words for me. This is my, my thinking. I learned from my father, and then I learned from Professor Drake to be modest. Professor Drake was extremely modest, excellent neurosurgeon, and also a good human being, and was always wondering why all the prices are coming here. But he was, of course, he was you Maybe people are the stalwarts. It is, uh, it is a good way to be be humble because the world is full of arrogant people. Okay, you can never good. think that you can be our arrogant. Never, never. Amazing, it amazing. Is, it is not my no way. Words. Not my way. Okay, you are amazing. Okay. There is no question. No second thoughts. 
Very good. You uh, before we before we close, you I just want to show you a friend of yours that's speaking in about an hour. Uh, Vinko is speaking. Yeah, I will with, follow him. Yeah. Yeah, and, and hope I don't know. It's going to be late at your where you're at, but anyway. No, no, so, no. It is never too late to listen to Vinko. Oh, Vinko. Okay, great. Okay. Never too late. He's okay. a great man. Great man. Great. Okay. Man. Okay, you have a great work with you, and I hope to see more of you. So yeah, thank, yeah. You. We, thank you. I will go now to Finland, but we will continue in March. I will come back with Subin, then we continue here. Yeah, excellent. Okay, and thank yeah. you, thank you, Ben and Takashi for working with you, and thank yeah. everyone else. Thank you. Sayonara. Thank you. Thank you, Yuga. Yuha again. And thank you, John. Okay, thank you, Ben. You'll be hearing from us. Okay, I'll, I'll put the information for the uh, webinar of, of Benko, Benko on the chat. Okay, we know we have that. So I will I will join. Okay, we'll see you there, you. Okay, yeah, yeah, certainly. Thank you very much, John. Thank you okay, very thank much. You, thank you. Uh, thank you, Juhai. We are uh, eager to wait, waiting for your book. Yeah, it is coming next autumn in Finnish. So, but I go now to Finland, Finland to negotiate with the publishing hey, company if they, if they can translate it immediately oh. in English and other languages, hopefully also in Chinese. It's 500 pages and uh, telling stories about good friends, Giancarlo Perra and nice times in Italy, the brain house and, and good stories and good stories, wonderful stories, sad stories like every nurses and as, as in their life, they have such sad stories and this influences your life. I think your book would hey, have thank a you very much. international market. I hopefully we can translate. I will go now to negotiate with the publishing company. Of course, Finnish is small language, so it should be translated in 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 those big languages: Spanish, English, Chinese, and so on. Hindu. Right. It is a good book. It's a good book. I had I had nothing else to do than write down sitting here in jail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you are. Okay, I gotta close. Thank you very much for everything. Okay.